Hey everyone. As more people start to use Azure Stack HCI for all of their various edge and on-premises scenarios, I thought it would be useful to dive into some of the observability capabilities we have, particularly around when you have a problem, some of those break fix type scenarios. If I think about, well, I have my Azure Stack HCI cluster. So remember, this is hyper-converged, it's cloud-connected. So we have Azure up here. There's going to be scenarios where something's not exactly a sunny day. There's some challenge and we need to maybe send some information to Microsoft about our cluster. Maybe even need them to connect in and assist. Now the specifics will change over time, but I wanted to at a very broad level, because this is coming up more and more, just talk about what are some of the things you may do as you engage with support. So if we start at the very basics, if I was to go and look at my Azure Stack HCI cluster, what I can see are two core extensions, and it's these are the two I'm gonna focus on. This telemetry and diagnostics, and edge remote support. So they're gonna be there by default, and they're doing two very different things. So if I look at those two extensions, so if we take about the telemetry and diagnostics, so this is about the observability pipeline from Azure, so it's sending data to Azure, and then what potentially, if I think about this, when I'm engaging with support, So they're very happy. What they will be able to ask you to do and what they would be able to see. Because obviously they're interacting via specific tools through the different services. And then you have that um, edge remote support. So the edge remote support, well, this is about being able to potentially enable connectivity to your system to perform various types of tasks. And you've got full control of that. So if I think about this telemetry and diagnostics, as the name suggests, there's really two elements to this. I can think about the idea that yes, we have telemetry. So I can think, well, there's telemetry. And the telemetry is really information about system performance, information about the functionality. There's no PII data there. That's used by Microsoft for ongoing improvement, uh, troubleshooting certain issues you may see. So that's this ongoing really just feed of information. And then separate from that, we have the idea of diagnostics. Now with the diagnostics, there's really two different elements. There are certain failure scenarios that can auto trigger some data to be sent. But in addition to that, there's gonna be this idea of on demand. So there's gonna be times what I want to do is send additional data of the diagnostics type, that really what's gonna happen here is support will ask for this data. So you're gonna be guided by this. You're gonna open a support case and they're gonna say, hey, we need some additional data. Can you run this command for us? And what we're gonna do here is to trigger this, you're gonna have this send diagnostics data. and you have control of what you're gonna do. Now by default, it's I think the last hour and it's all nodes in the cluster. But there are a number of different parameters you can do. You can do a from date and a to date. You can filter by role. In fact, if we jump over. So here we're looking at a system. And if I just start to do this send diagnostics data, you'll see there are different parameters. So for example, I could do 
from date, and obviously I put in a date and a to date. So this would give me more control to specify, well, exactly what timeline do I want to send the data for? Maybe there was a particular trouble time, I want to send data from there. In fact, if we look at the docs, it's probably gonna be an easier way of doing this. So if we look at the documentation, then it talks about, sure, I can specify the from date and the to date, but then I can also do filter by role. And there's a whole bunch of these different roles we see. There's bare metal, uh, download service, it lists all of them here. So if I was having a problem with a specific area, you may be told, well, hey, enter dash filter by role, because generally, if I think about, well, I'm collecting all of this data, it will be quicker if I only collect the data that I specifically need. So sure, I can send all the data for the past hour for all nodes for all roles, but it's probably gonna be more useful to sometimes specify a certain date range. It might be to only send it for the area I'm having a problem. And um, there's, you also might see SDDC, so storage spaces, direct data, I can optionally send as well. But you're gonna be guided. You don't have to work these commands out for yourself. Support will tell you, oh, okay, I want this. So here you can see that collect SDDC. So that would be, hey, I'm gonna go and get the storage space direct logs as well. So this is all about, hey, I need to get additional information to support. Now, if you're curious about what you've done, I can do a get log collection history. And when I run those get the diagnostic data commands, it will use some local space first, because it has to collect the logs, then it will send it, and then it will delete those files. But here you can go and query anytime you want, and I can see the detail about what collections I have done, when they were triggered, the amount of size, the number of files that were sent up to there. So I can always go and find out, well, what has happened from a support perspective. So generally, that's gonna be step one. So they may have some basic diagnostics when you're working with them, but then they might need some additional data. You as a customer have control of that. You will run the command that will get the additional data and send it to support. Fantastic. But sometimes they may be more productive if they can actually get some hands-on keyboard scenarios. I could think about, hey, I need to look in more detail about a certain log collection, maybe even help you initiate it. Maybe I need to validate some settings, maybe it's a live migration, and maybe there's some host configuration. I wanna check system health of Hyper-V or storage or failover clustering. There might be network issues, I wanna test some VM configuration. Maybe there's some long running job. There's a whole set of different scenarios. In fact, again, I think the documentation, if we go and look at this, it will talk about, well, here are some of the reasons that we may want to have that remote support. And you have full control of this. You have to go and turn this on. So here it's talking about, we're gonna run a command to enable remote support. So if I, if I think about my environment, this does not enable by default, just because you're cloud connected, they can't do anything. I have to say, I want to enable this. So from right here, I am going to, when I want to enable this, I'm gonna say enable remote support. Now by default, you say an access level. So there's gonna be an access level. And what this is doing, it's controlling, they're getting a just enough and just in time administration capability on your machine. And I can either say, I want it just to be diagnostics. So that would mean you can do get commands, I can look at things, but I can't change anything. Or you might have diagnostics repair. It's not full control, 
but they'll be able to run a few commands that may help repair your system. And then you've got an expiry in minutes. And it's by default, it's basically 24 hours. But you can configure that to whatever value you want. So once again, if we go and look at our system over here, So if I want to enable support, or I could say enable remote support, I can say an access level, and I've got diagnostics or diagnostics repair. So I'm specifying exactly what I want. And then I can say that expiry time. And I could set it to the 1440. I think that is uh, the default. But I could reduce that if I wanted to. Maybe I'll say, actually, no, I just want you to connect for an hour. And I would trigger that. Now, notice what it's now doing is giving me detail about exactly what I'm going to allow. And I have a final consent. Yes or no. So not only am I running the command, I do then have the ability to have that final consent. And it's telling you what's going on. So it's talking about just enough administration running over here. So I can see what it's doing, etc. And then they'll have a certain set of commands available to them. They'll have, think about it like a remote shell. So now I've enabled this, the support, will have this remote shell capability to run certain commands until that expiry time. And within that, just enough administration of what you selected. Maybe they can only view, or maybe they can view and run some commands for you. Now I can go and look to see, well, where am I currently with this? So if I clear the screen. so. So I could say, well, get remote support access, include expired. And it's showing me the ones that I have. So I can see currently I've got one that's active. And I could also see ones that have expired. I could end it so I could do disable remote support. And now if I look again, they've all expired. So I can disable that uh, as soon as I want to. I can even get the full detailed history. I can get a detailed transcript. So I can get remote support session history. And there haven't been any right now. But one of the other things I can do with this command is I can go and get a session transcript. So if I want to know exactly what happened in a particular session, I can go and get that detailed transcript if I'm curious about what exactly was going on. But the key point here is you have all of the control. So I can enable it. As we saw, I can do the disable. I can go and get the history so I can view the history. I can get the transcript of it. Most of the time, the sequence of this is going to be, hey, I'm engaging with support. They can see some things. They're probably going to say, hey, can you go and send this diagnostics data? Maybe, depending on what's happening, they then might say, hey, I, I need to go and connect in to help you. Most of any major change, they're still going to be over your shoulder. They'll be asking you to do those things. But this will maybe help expedite the troubleshooting if instead of you having to constantly type all these commands, they may just ask so they can go and look at these things. And again, you have full control over what you want to allow. And I just wanted to quickly cover this because it's coming up a bit more often about what are these things they're asking me to do? Why are they asking me? Hey, they want some additional logs. They'll give you the details of date, time, the roles they want, if they want the storage space direct data. It's gonna collect it locally first, the amount of time it takes. It's gonna vary based on the time range, what roles. It will send it and then delete it locally. If they want to actually get some hands-on, 
within this very controlled, just enough, just in time um, construct. They'll ask you to run enable remote support. Maybe they just want to look, diagnostics. Maybe they want to be able to look and run a couple of fairly low powered commands. They might do diagnostics repair. You set an expiry time, you can disable it whenever you want to. I can go and look at the history of these. I can even go and get that full um, session transcript if I want to see what exactly was done. That was it. Uh, I hope that was useful. Tonight's video, take care.